Welcome to the ACC on ESPN, part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. We're in the Dome tonight for number two Clemson, undefeated, taking on three and three Syracuse. Hello again, everyone, along with Jen Lana and Mac Brown. I'm Dave Lamont. You talk Syracuse, you talk speed, speed, speed. Get the play out fast, get the ball in the air fast, so we're going to go fast. Here are nine facts about tonight's game in 90 seconds. Dino Babers, he's all about tempo. He wants to go fast. They're going to run 100-plus offensive plays tonight, and to do that, they're going to have to make a lot of first downs. Today marks the ninth anniversary of Dabo Sweeney taking over as the interim head coach at Clemson. All he's done is go 95 and 28 and elevate the Tigers to one of the nation's elite. Despite injuring an ankle last week, quarterback Kelly Bryant is expected to play tonight. The questions are how well and how long. Clemson's defense has a dominating front seven. They had 11 sacks versus Auburn earlier this year. That's more than some teams have in a complete season. They can harass a quarterback. Brent Venables has his defense playing with the same kind of energy you see from the defensive coordinator himself on the sidelines. Top 10 in four defensive categories. The Clemson D will be chasing after Syracuse's Eric Dungy, who's become one of the ACC's best dual threat quarterbacks. Can he beat Clemson with his arm or with his legs? Steve Ishmael leads the nation in receiving 56 catches for over 700 yards. He's big, he's physical, and he's fast. Irv Phillips is the explosive half of that duo, guys. 17 catches for 188 yards two weeks ago. His 52 receptions this year, top five in the country. The Tigers take the top off of defense with speedy wideout junior Deion Kane. He has 89 career catches, 16 of them for touchdowns. And there you have nine in 90, and just like that, we're ready to kick off. Clemson has won the toss and has deferred, so Alex Spence will be kicking off. And keep an eye on number 10, Sean Riley, who a year ago led the nation in kickoff return yards. See, in fact, if Clemson kicks away from him, he averages almost 28 yards a pop. This one is underway. Toe is met leather. And it will be Riley running up on a short kick at around the eight-yard line. Gets a couple of good blocks, and Riley, you can see, is shifty and fast, and he gets out to the 33-yard line. Let's get more from Jen Latta about the health of Clemson quarterback Kelly Bryant. Will he go tonight? Well, Kelly Bryant was dealing with an ankle injury, guys, from last week's game. I watched him during warm-ups. He was mobile, putting pressure on that left foot, showing Syracuse as he was dancing and moving around out there. He is good to go tonight. Jen, thank you very much. And we await this Clemson offense being brought out by the junior from Oregon, Eric Dungy. So it's a battle of number two as a quarterback tonight. Bryant for the Tigers. And for the Orange, it'll be Dungy, who needs one more rushing touchdown to break a record co-held by Bill Hurley and Donovan McMahon. 20 rushing touchdowns for the Cues. And we have whistles. You don't see that very often. And Nino Babers reacting to that. What do you mean? Read his lips. They were a little slow coming out. Yeah, and as a head coach, I want the official to say, come on, coach, speed him up. Let's get him out there. We shouldn't start a game with a delay pin. Tailback, Bo Neal checks out of the backfield, so an empty set here for Dungy on first down. He is going to have to scramble against that big front. He's got some room to run, though. Dungy will have a first down, and he'll get outside the 40 to the 44-yard line. Kendall Joseph, 21 yards, unable to do anything there. Missed him, and Dungy, and here goes the Syracuse speed. Neal stays in, he'll get the carry, and he'll pop through into the second level, and he'll have a first down following an 11-yard pickup. They want to go fast enough to keep Clemson from being able to get their call in and line up. So you think Brent Venables is active on the sideline for Clemson in a normal game with the pace that he's going to have to get those defensive calls in. It's going to be interesting to watch this battle. Fake to Neal. Going to go for Ishmael. He is oh, pretty well covered by Mark Fields. And he had it in his hands and could not hang on. It'll be second down and ten. And Steve Ishmael's 6'2", so he's a tall guy that they like to match up with smaller corners. He's very physical. That's normally a ball he would win in a 50-50 jump. And for the first time, Syracuse takes a breath.
another empty backfield here and now Neil pops out of there and he will stay next to Dungey for the moment. He stays in to block pressure coming in from the outside his Clemson front is a good one Dungey's going to run again and he will be hit short of the first down but he picked up about eight Dorian O'Daniel number six for Clemson is having an outstanding season at linebacker stopped him after an eight yard game and Dungey has the second most rushing yards of any quarterback in, in power five so he's going to have to use his feet tonight to stay away from that rush. He's had to scramble twice. He's going to be chased outside again. He's going to tuck and he's going to run and he's going to get the first down. Tanner Muse, number 19, came over, could not get there in time. Dungey's got speed and it's going to be a first down for the Orange. Clemson secondary loves number 19, Tanner Muse. This guy's big. He's 6'2, 225. He came all the way across the field to knock Dungey out of bounds. It's time to hand off for Neal. He'll break right and he'll break into the Clemson defense, but not until he gets seven, maybe eight yards. Van Smith and Fields in there on the stop for the Tigers. In Syracuse right now, chunks of yards. Yeah, this is not what, what Dabo, when he, uh, Dabo Sweeney wanted as the start. You go on the road, get a three and out. You've got this high powered offense, and you're letting them move it down the field at will. 51 yards on the ground and six carries. Dante Strickland is now the tailback number four. And Sean Riley is shaking the slot receiver. This is Strickland. And Strickland running hard and tough, bowling over Kendall Joseph and getting a first down. It's the first play that Strickland's been in there. Strickland's a big 210 pound guy that powers right over Joseph. Oh, Dungey's zone read that time was read better than he. Number 99, Cleveland Farrell just stuffed that for a loss of five. Second down and 15 coming up. And here's where Syracuse has had trouble in the red zone scoring touchdowns. They've had to take field goals. They're going to have to score touchdowns tonight. Probably using Dungey's legs to win this game. You expect a lot of going forward on fourth downs? Absolutely. Time for Dungey here. He wanted to go to the end zone. This mail is covered. He actually went out of bounds, so he's not eligible, and Dungey does the right thing and just throws it away. Third and 15 coming up. And if you're the head coach here, who is the play caller, Dino Babers, you're trying to get at least half of this back so you can have a fourth down and four or five if you're going to go for fourth down. They do have a steady kicker in Cole Murphy if they need him. Made 10 field goals already. Strickland stays in. He's had coming up to 300 touches without ever putting the ball on the ground. Screen pass here. He'll get one. And he stays alive and he's got room to the 10. One man to beat. He'll do it. Touchdown, Syracuse. There is a flag down by the E in orange in the end zone. It might be a celebration penalty. There's a touchdown on the play. After the play, unsportsmanlike, number four offense. That's number four first of the game. That is Strickland to hit with that penalty. Now you, you can see Coach Babers is talking to him. Huge mistake because you do not want to start giving hidden yards away to Clemson on the kickoff. So Cole Murphy will come on for the PAT. The penalty to be enforced on the kick. That means they'll be kicking from their 20-yard line, not the 35. But it's a 10-play, 72-yard drive in 3 minutes and 16 seconds and a 23-yard touchdown pass. Dungey to Strickland, his second receiving touchdown on the season. Dungey's 10th. Perfect start for the Orange. This is a perfect start, Dave. They blitz from the field. They've got the screen into it. You have a missed tackle by Fields. Strickland takes it right down for the score. Syracuse all over it on the first drive. Well, a fast start for Syracuse, seven and nothing. The Tigers about to get the ball and very possibly in good field position after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Cuse, leaving it a kickoff from the 20-yard line for Murphy. If you 
we've got ETN and Feaster back there, two speedsters. This is ETN at the 13. You can see how quickly he goes to top speed. He'll get out to the 38-yard line. That's great field position for the junior from Calhoun Falls, South Carolina, Jordan Martin there on the stop. That's another number two. He made the tackle, and now here comes number two, Kelly Bryant. 97 rushes on the year. He's coming off of a game where he didn't finish against Wake Forest after tweaking an ankle to back. The coaches told us he practiced all week, and he's ready to go. Blitz picked up. Bryant throws quickly. Caught by Kane at the 44-yard line. Let's see if they mark it there. That'll be a six-yard pickup. The Syracuse defense is going to use some zone blitz early so they can keep receivers in front of them, but also put pressure on the run. Good opening call for Clemson. Feaster is the tailback, number 28. Back to him. Quick throw. Renfro, he's open, and he's got a first down. Renfro, and it's, it's a catch on second down. That doesn't happen very often with Hunter Renfro. He's their third down guy. Now, this is perfect. They take the run up inside. It pulls the outside backer away. Renfro's wide open for an easy catch. Guess who else is playing at a high tempo pace right now? That's Clemson's offense, and that's going to be wandering into the backfield. 95, Chris Slick. Offside defense, number 95. Five yard penalty, first down. Good job by Clemson's quarterback Kelly changing up the snap count to get Slayton to pull up a little early in offsides. So first down and five and already now at the Syracuse 37 yard line. All Syracuse's defense talked about was stopping the run stopping the run. Clemson started with two passes. Now the handoff to Feaster and he gets through Feaster. Easy trip to the end zone seven six the score. And when Deion Kane jumped into a Mac, that's the first time Feaster was touched on that play. <laughs> Absolutely. You've got a 220 pound track star out of high school, 100 and 200 pound meters. You've got our 100 and 200 pound, pound guy running 100 and 200 meter dash. He's that fast. And this offensive line is the best Dabo Sweeney's had at Clemson. They play eight guys, they rotate them, four starters back from last year. That's a great opening drive for Clemson to answer. You want fast? How about a three-play drive in 67 seconds for Clemson, 62 yards. This is power football. Knock them out. I could run through that whole day. And I couldn't have the speed that Feaster's got when he turns up the score. Great fun here in Syracuse outside the dome before the game and inside. A frantic start with both teams scoring touchdowns on their opening drives. Trying to kick away from Riley, but instead they kick it over. And we're getting a touchback, and Eric Dungy and his offense will take over at the 25 yard line. So we've talked already extensively, Mac, about Syracuse and the time between plays, and this is what they've done so far. Yeah, they've talked about wanting to run 100 plays a game. They've been in the 90s quite often. I said, how many do you run and you usually lose? They said 80. And you can see 79 here against Central Michigan. They still won. But these guys are going to go really fast. They had the perfect drive to start the game. Clemson's defense has got to pick it up. So just here under 20 seconds between plays on that opening drive. Dante Strickland is the tailback. He has the touchdown for Syracuse. They run a jet sweep, and now it's a fake. They look like they might want to go back to Dungy. That's Devin C. Butler who will throw it, and it is broken up. It was nearly intercepted by Cleveland Farrell. You talk about a zone blitz back. Your defensive end was at the 50-yard line, and he almost caught that pass. And this guy's 6'5", 260, but he read it perfectly, and he turned and followed Dungy on the throwback to the quarterback. This is a very well-coached defense. That was a trick play that could have been an easy walk in. It was covered like a blanket. So second and 10 after all that excitement. Mm -hmm. 
Now more conventional play with Strickland into the middle of that really strong Clemson front four. And he'll fight to the 28 to gain three. It'll be third down and seven. And that time Dexter Lawrence and O'Daniel in there on the stop. And it may take Clemson's defense a little time to adjust to this speed because it's very hard for Clemson to simulate this offense in practice during the week. Clemson 28% allowed on third down coming into the game. But they've given up two and two tries so far. Pressure on Dungey. They're going to stop him here. Austin Bryant, number seven. O'Daniel, number six. Just too many white and orange jerseys. This is the exact same blitz that Clemson brought when they caught him in the screen. 23rd sack by this defense to bring the safety from the field, and they were fighting to see who got there first. <laughs> that's why, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why Syracuse's offense has got to stay ahead of the chains. They can't win on third down and long because they can't protect those big guys up front from Clemson. So in now, Sterling Hoffrichter, the punter, he's a good one. Ray Ray McLeod is back to receive. He's a good one. That's a high kick. McLeod, fair catch. And he'll make it to the 37 yard line. So that's about where Clemson started last time, and they went right down the field to score. Lamont. Kelly Bryant, second series, finds a receiver at the 40 yard line. And over to the 42 yard line, a catch made by Mylon Richards, who had a key block on that touchdown run. And Richard picks up five. That's his 10th catch of the year. You know who his uncle is? Herschel Walker is his uncle. Yeah, he's pretty good genes. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling left, Bryant, wide open, Renfro sliding. Catch first down, 42 yard line. Martin is in coverage. Notice Clemson's only had one run tonight so far because Syracuse is crowding the line of scrimmage with so many defensive players. Pocket throws caught that's Richard again. That's going to be a first down at around the 20 maybe even inside the 20 yard line. It's unusual to have a 6 2 255 pound tight end who is a mismatch with the linebackers inside. And if there's any question about Kelly Bryant's ankle being well enough to follow through and throw the ball. I think we got our answer right there on the perfect throw. That was a terrific throw a 19 yard pickup for the Tigers who moved into the red zone very quickly. Back to the ground, Feaster. This time the Q's defense stiffs him. That should be no gain on the play. Second down and 10 coming up. Zaire Franklin, number four, one of two really good linebackers, along with number 30, Paris Bennett. Franklin, an emotional leader for this Orange team. Brian Ward, the defensive coordinator at Syracuse, said we're going to stop the run and we're going to make Kelly Bryant beat us with his arm. So far, that's the defense they're playing. Well, Bryant is five for five back for 64 yards. Throw out here, looking to Ray Ray McLeod. Ray Ray did not get to drop the ball and recovered very quickly. Hunter Renfro fell on it back at the line of scrimmage. McLeod had it knocked out of his hand by Jordan Martin. Very alert by Renfro, ball knocked out. McLeod has got to protect the ball. You've got to have your running game on the road. You've got to play defense on the road. You cannot have turnovers when you take your team on the road to win. Third down has been Renfro's ball. Let's see where Kelly Bryant goes with this ball. Renfro's in the slot to the top. Pressure on Bryant. He will elude it and get the pass off. It won't be anywhere near a first down. Trevion Thompson paid for the price of catching that ball, but what a great play by Bryant to avoid the sack and make the field goal for Alex Spence a little bit easier. Paris Bennett, number 30, is one of the tougher players on the field tonight, and he made a great field tackle. Bennett has, has had a run of great games back. Ten straight, excuse me, three straight games of 10 plus tackles. Now, Alex Spence is one through three since taking over for Greg Hugel. This from 35. Ooh, that looked ugly. The snap was a little high. The holder is the coach's son, Will Sweeney. And Clemson 
unable to put points on the board as the Syracuse defense rose up. So Syracuse holds. And the last time Clemson gave up a touchdown on an opening drive, they lost. That was that shocking loss in Death Valley when they lost to Pitt. Of course, in the end, it all worked out for the Tigers. But still, that one shook through college football. We're not saying that's going to happen tonight. But that is an interesting thing to keep an eye on. Dante Strickland in a tailback. Dungey will fire into traffic. Catch out to the 34-yard line. First down for the Orange. Steve Ishmael with a catch and a 14-yard pickup. Fans know Ishmael is leading the country with 56, now 57 receptions. Leads at yards also. He now has 743 yards out of North Miami Beach. Little fake to Strickland. Hopped over there, wide open. This is Urban Phillips, and nobody's going to catch him. It's an easy touchdown for Syracuse. Six yards, Phillips' is third and touchdown of the season. Back up, I'm going to go ahead and assume that was a blown coverage. Uh, it was. You start looking at Ryan Carter, number 31, he got confused. And there were too many people standing flat footed, and they ran right by him. This is not the start that Dabo Sweeney and Brent Venables wanted. So you can see it's a drop back pass. They've got good protection. He slides right inside and there's no high safety. So it is just a bust and an easy touchdown throw. But you when you go on the road as a head coach don't let the opposing team get excited especially when you're a huge favorite and tonight Syracuse has taken the lead and got everybody in this building thinking they have a chance to win. Well after the field goal was missed Clemson had gone seven plays looked really sharp till the near the end of that drive and they couldn't get any points. This drive lasted 39 seconds 80 yards two plays. Syracuse has not beaten a top two team since last century 33 years ago. We have a long way to go here. Try to kick it to away from ETM who's standing back at the goal line. They're going to drive him deep, 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 or not even a guy that. Oh, yes, he is going to take it out. ETM saw a hole up the middle, and he'll get outside all the way to the 28, 29 yard line. A daring attempt by ETM. Look at Clemson. You can see their secondary. The middle of the field is wide open. Someone is responsible for that. It's probably the safety to this side. He had to get back to the hash. But you can see he widens. It's man to man. There's just an absolute busted coverage because it's zone on the back side to the right and man to man on the left. And someone let the receiver go free. ETN is the tailback. He'll get the carry now. He'll be brought down after a one yard pickup. Coming in from the backside was the Sam linebacker, Jonathan Thomas, number 23. It'll be second and nine. And if you're Clemson's offense, you've got to answer now because you do not want your defense on the field too much and get worn down in that fourth quarter with this tempo offense of Syracuse. Bryant, a little bit of a high throw. Kane with a catch right at the mark. And based on where the line judge is standing, it's either a first down or they're inches away. And it is a first down. Frederick in coverage that time. So Bryant, by the way, eight for eight for 75. Yeah, very impressed with Kelly Bryant's passing, but noticed we haven't seen him with a design run tonight. 
So they're probably going to try to take care of that ankle as much as they can. Mentioned that he's the team's leading rusher coming into the game, and he also has had 97 carries through the first six games. None tonight. Pressure. ETN, look out. He is super fast. And ETN gets nine. It'll be second down and a yard to go. Rodney Williams in there on the stop. Syracuse for the zone run blitz on first down. And Paris Bennett ran right by ATN as he turned up for the first down. Got to keep your head up when you're coming on the blitz. Bryant. He's going to take off here. And it kind of a tentative run, it looked at least to me, before Paris Bennett gleefully shoved him out of bounds. And I think he's short of the first down. Well, that play was obvious that Kelly Bryant's not 100%. He was being very careful with his ankle as he was sprinting to the right. So you'll see the Clemson coaches try to take care of him tonight from a running standpoint. They need a yard. I say they go with their big back up inside against that big offensive line. Power football. Following the tight end, ETN goes into the pile and he'll actually lose about a half a yard. Now, on fourth down and a yard and a half to go, are you playing field position or are you going to go for the play for the first down? What you look at now is you're, you're probably going to punt the ball or it's a great opportunity to fake the punt because Syracuse is excited, the building's excited. You don't want to give them the ball back here. You'd like to play defense. But as much as Dabo Sweeney likes to fake, I would definitely be alert for the fake with a fourth down and one at midfield. Spears is the punter. And he's going to rugby. He's going to roll a lot. And finally dies at the seven yard line. 46 yards. Not very much hang time, but a lot of time rolling on the ground. The ESPN app is fans' best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. You download the ESPN app and start streaming right now. It's Friday night, I'm sure we got folks sneaking a peek at the, this game somewhere that not at home. This will be the poorest starting position for either team in this first quarter, but Syracuse has the seven point lead. Dungey so far, 123 total yards, 103 in the air. Strickland will stay in, number four at the tailback position. We haven't seen big Chris Elmore yet, number 36 for the Orange. Dungey's going to take off, and O'Daniel just wrapped him right up. Dorian O'Daniel, number six. That's a loss back to the four-yard line. It'll be second to 13. Yeah, he comes in untouched, and Dorian was a great running back in high school, and it shows you the athletic ability of this Clemson defense, but he comes on free. That's a blocking mistake up front by Syracuse. Well, Daniel was playing at an All-American level so far this year, the number one tackler for this team, two interception returns for touchdowns in big games. And now Chris Elmore, number 36, the big rhino back, is in the game. Dungy on the draw, and he'll be to the 10-yard line. Sets up third down and seven as... Albert Huggins, number 67, getting in. So some substitutes getting some time for the Tigers makes the stop. Yeah, good call by Dino Babers on the quarterback draw, trying to get some of that sack yardage back. So you're sitting in a position now, you're third and seven. You've got to be able to protect. Last two third downs, Clemson's come with a blitz. Yeah, Dungey just ejected what appeared to be a shoot. He's going to throw, and it's going to be caught by Phillips. No, incomplete. The ball is on the turf. It is incomplete. We have a personal foul, roughing the passer. A huge mental mistake by Clemson. And now that gives Dungey time to tie his shoe. Dave, I was just about to say the, the fact that Davos Sweeney decided to punt the ball ended up perfectly because they get a three and out. They're going to have great field position. Huge mistake by Clemson's defense. You can see Coach Sweeney saying, think, think. And they're going to take care of the quarterbacks. And it's pretty hard to argue with that ball. Christian Wilkins got up high with the forearm. 
right in front of the official. So the ball has been moved out after the penalty to the 24 yard line. And interestingly, in coaching, you're not going to jump all over Wilkins because he's one of your best pass rushers, and you don't want to slow him down. You're going to say be smart, but you're not going to say, come on now, don't be hitting that quarterback. Stay away from him uh, because he's one of the best players. We have whistles. The previous play is under review. You know what they might be looking for? One of two things. Was the pass actually caught or was it targeted? Steve. Steve? I thought it was okay. really close to the neck and head area, so I'll bet they're looking at targeting. And that would be a huge blow to Clemson. If that's what they're looking for, if they're looking for whether the pass was caught, because the ruling on the field was incomplete. It looked at first that he caught it, and we're going to take a look with Phillips and whether or not the ball contacted the ground at any point did he lose control. And you can see after looking at the replay, it looks like he did lose control of the football and the whole completing the process of the catch business. And I don't think targeting is in play here. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. 15-yard penalty for roughing the passer. First down. I think that one was close when you start looking at Wilkins in the upper area, too. So you got to be really, really smart because that would have been a huge loss for Clemson. He would have been ejected for the remainder of the game. You're losing a preseason All-American in a game where you're down in a rowdy house on the road against a fired-up Syracuse team. We look up now, there's only a minute 11 left in the first quarter, and the Syracuse offense has been dominant. Dungey trying to get away from that rush, and they're going to get him. That'll be another sack, two-yard loss. Cleland Farrell, number 99. You know, we talked Lawrence, we talked Bryant, we talked Wilkins. You can't leave that guy out. No, they, they, they're uh, 24, five sacks now in the year. Uh, they've got one of the best front sevens in the country. And there's further proof of that right there. That might gain a yard, and O'Daniel and Bryant in there, six and seven. So now you all of a sudden have a third and long here. They need, uh, they're going to say ten for the first down. And this is where they've come after them. They've played man. They've come after them. And Eric Dungey cannot hold the ball. He's got to get rid of the ball quickly. But they've got a chip in the back. He's under a lot of pressure there, and Strickland with a beautiful tackle by Mark Fields is brought down for a loss. Exact same blitz as the touchdown play earlier in the game by Syracuse. Everything was exactly the same with the one exception. Mark Fields makes a very good open field tackle where he got his head down and missed the tackle on Strickland on the first play. Great play by Fields. That is the end of the first quarter, and it was a thrilling one here in this ACC matchup on ESPN, part of our Friday doubleheader. The Orange getting a standing ovation in front of their crowd. Lead number two, Clemson, 14-7. Start of the second quarter will begin with a Syracuse punt, the second for Sterling Hoffrichter tonight. His first went 42 yards with Jen Latta and Mac Brown, Dave Lamont. First half of our Friday night doubleheader. We have Washington State Cal following us. And we just hope that the folks in Cal can play the game. With the tragedy out there with the fires, there is concern about the air quality. And that's just been such a difficult story to watch. Another very, very high kick. McLeod looking for it in the lights. Makes an easy catch at the 35 after a solid 45-yard punt. Two years ago, when Deshaun Watson was the quarterback for the Tigers, they had a struggle in this building against the Orange. It was my pleasure to be at this game. And Watson will score here on a three-yard run. Clemson was highly ranked at the time. Syracuse was down 14. Zach Mahoney had to start this game because of injury to other quarterbacks. He scores, but... Deshaun Watson, Deion Cain, 40 yards out. Just Watson had a magnificent game. Three touchdowns, 473 total yards, and Clemson, number one at the time, won it by 10. Bryant hit after he throws it. 
and it's complete over to the 42-yard line. A catch made by DeAndre Overton, a sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. We do have an injury update on a Syracuse player from Jen. Yeah, guys, just a few moments ago, we saw Scoop Bradshaw heading to the locker room surrounded by three members of the support staff, looked to be in a lot of pain. He's the starting corner, and I believe Jawan Dowell is now out there in his place. You have two Floridians, Bradshaw from Plant High in Tampa and Dowell from American Heritage in Plantation, Florida. That's a high pass, incomplete, trying to get it to Amari Rogers. And Mac, you said something this morning. If your ankle's bad, what happens to throws? Well, you can't follow through, so you get a little bit high. And the more you go through this ball game, the more sore your ankle could get, too, because it stiffens up as you continue to play on it throughout the night. After hitting his first nine passes, that's the first incompletion for Kelly Bryant. Adam Choi stays in at the tailback spot. Bryant. Oh, what a great catch that time by Rodgers. He is a freshman from Knoxville, Tennessee. And speaking of legacies, his father, T. Martin. Yeah. His father was a pretty good player, too. Yes, he was. Won a national championship. Pretty good at what he does now, calling plays. You now, first and 10 the 45 yard line of Syracuse territory. Choice will stay in at the tail. But they'll hand it off instead to Rodgers, and he is brought down for a significant loss by Rodney Williams. A six yard loss. They're going to penetrate on first down. With their defensive front linebackers, they know that Kelly Bryant's not going to run the ball, so the quarterback opt read option's not going to be as effective tonight. Really good penetration by the defense coming up with a big loss. Choice. And he'll get the lost yardage back, giving us third down and 10 coming up. Zaire Franklin among the tacklers there for Syracuse number four. It's really hard to call plays when you've lost your number one running back as such in your quarterback designed runs. So it's tougher for the offensive coordinator tonight to be able to figure out what to call when he would normally go to Kelly Bryant's running game very often. They take out the tight end Richard and bring in number one Travion Thompson. Renfro in motion now to the near side. Bryant. In trouble. He's going to have to run. And then we brought down short. No game four. Chris Slate, number 95, on the stop. Yes, Renfro's running a, an inside route at the bottom of your screen. He clears the linebacker. He turns right there. Kelly Bryant just didn't have enough time to lead the ball inside. So you bring out. Will Spires again, the Richard freshman punter. And this is regular defense on the field. It's not as easy to fake a punt when they've got the regular guys out there. They'll try to stop, stop get them inside the 10. He puts a lot of spin on this. Riley will catch it at the six. So for the second time, terrible field position for the Orangemen, but they have the advantage here. 14-7 over second-ranked Clemson. That stat shows a couple of things. Number one, how tough Clemson has been in the first half this year and how good Eric Dungey has been so far. That's primarily first quarter numbers, too, as we have a long way to go in the second quarter. But if you can also see Dungey's backed up, the offense will take the ball at the six-yard line following a fine punt by Spires. Strickland, the tailback. Dungey's going to keep it. And he will get flipped get a couple of very hard-earned yards. Ryan Carter closing in, and Cleveland Farrell also forcing Dungey after a barely say no game, really. Dungey's going to run enough tonight on scrambling and quarterback draws. I don't know that I'd be running him too much, but they've got to get off the goal line. Well, he's got a wide-open receiver here. That is Pierce, the tight end. That's about the second or third time we've seen somebody get wide open. Tanner Muse finally brought him down after a 20-yard gain. Well-designed play. They fake the screen to the left side and get the wheel. Fake to Strickland. 
one on one and it's going to be caught there by number 17 Jamal Custis who has not played the last four games and the Clemson tackler is injured that's Trayvon Mullen who brought him down and he cannot get up. Now I need to point this out you might have heard some booing. There is a thought among some Syracuse fans that because of the pace Syracuse plays at that players will fake injuries from time to time. We're not doctors. We have no idea what the situation is. But if you hear a little hollering when an opposing player is down, some Syracuse fans aren't buying it. Clemson's Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott's relationship goes back to their playing days at Clemson when they were teammates. And they were actually pregame stretch partners for 2000 to 2002. Elliott there on the left, Jeff Scott on the right. They have partnered up to make Clemson one of the best offenses in the country. The first time they worked together was the 2014 Russell Athletic Bowl after Chad Morris had gone to Dallas at SMU. The Tigers have won 35 out of 37 out of those two. Mullen was able to get off under his own power. And Ruben Phillips will be on the near side. Now they've moved some people around. And big number 36, Chris Elmore, Rhino back is in he'll be the lead blocker and they go deep for Custis and it's broken up AJ Terrell the other fast number eight for Clemson helps break up the pass there's a penalty marker down See a lot of communication with those. Little... There are two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Offside number seven is declined. Holding number eight is accepted. Ten yard penalty, first down. Well, he was in coverage. That's Terrell, the freshman from Atlanta, in coverage and with a penalty. When you see you're about to get beat and you've got 6 1 on 6 5, and you realize the big guy who just beat you on the slant is going deep, you grab him and hold him. So the ball is in Tigers territory at the 49 yard line. Two penalties by the Tigers defense have led to first downs. And now they're holding up the Tigers, so Clemson could finish substituting. O'Neill, tailback. Now he goes to the near side. They quickly throw down the middle, and that should be a first down. Catch made by Phillips. Gain of 11. Very good pre-snap shift to confuse the Clemson defense. They've really got them on their heels right now. This is the 25th play coming up for the Tigers. Dungy. Flags are down. There was a collision around the 25-yard line involving Ishmael and Mark Fields. Let's see how this goes. Interference defense. So another penalty against the Clemson defensive backs. Pass interference defense number two, first down. And that gives Syracuse their 13th first down. You're working man to man against the number one receiver in the country, and he just grabbed him at the end there and hooked him with his right arm and pushed him out of bounds. That was a close one. But Could've still, either way. if you're going to grab and, and push, they're going to call it. Fields is a, a junior. So he's go got his hands full. Yeah, he does. There was a little uh, contact from Ishmael at the start of that route. Dexter Lawrence in there on the stop. That's a gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. You know, Clemson's not as deep in their defensive line, so the number of plays could be a factor here as this game goes on. Syracuse doing some massive shifting, and then it'll be a false start penalty. Lots of shifting going Pass on. Start. Offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty, second down. Uh, 
That looked like Tom Landry 1970s Dallas Cowboys going on there, Mac, with all that kind of shifting. Well, it really did. And But you look at, I love Eric Dungey. He got all over Evan Adams about not being focused and sitting instead of having the penalty. Dungey on the throw. My. Swallowed up by Farrell at the 30 yard line. Goodness. Yeah, they were tired of it, so they brought the safety from the field. Farrell came up inside the tackle and caught him in the quarterback draw. Perfect play by Farrell. Farrell's so quick, quick as a cat. He's a redshirt sophomore, by the way, so now here comes third down at 16. Can't take a sack here. You've got a chance to kick a field goal, so keep the right to kick the ball. Get the ball out of your hands quickly if you're Eric Dungey. Three to get off the snap. They'll get it off before the penalty. Here comes the heat. One on one. And there's Ishmael. Flag is down, and this might be offensive interference. It was Ishmael versus Fields again, and this might be coming back. Ishmael 6'2", 209 pounds, and he has a tendency sometimes to get separation with the push right there. And he just pushed Field in the back enough to get separation with the back shoulder throw and make the catch. Really good call by the officials. It was an incredible effort that he got into the end zone and got this house excited. The horn goes off here, but it's all for naught. And back to the 45-yard line we go now for, they've got to get 31 yards so what kind of, what's the mentality now here for Syracuse as a play caller for you, Dino Babers? You'd like to get 10, 15 yards and kick it a field goal. You definitely want to change field position coming off your goal line. You've already done that, so no turnover, no sack here. Mike Black, our kicking expert at Spotter, says need about 10 more yards to get into field goal range. And they're going to be a little short. Now the ball's out. Picked up by Tanner Muse. Muse has a clear path to the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers, no flags. Now, is it going to be considered a fumble after the replay review? I take it back. There is a penalty marker down. We couldn't see it. It's right in front of the Syracuse bench. So there is a flag down at the 42-yard line. It was just obscured by the Orangeman bench. So there's two things. What's the penalty, and was that actually a fumble? During the return, there is no foul for a block in the back. Touchdown on the play. After the play, unsportsmanlike Clemson, number 19. That's his first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. Oh, well, that's a fumble. There's absolutely no question about it. That's going to count. Tanner Muse was hit with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So the second time we've had a touchdown followed by an unsportsman conduct penalty on the person who scored. The fumble forced by Isaiah Simmons. And Hughes, one more unsportsman like conduct, and he is out of the game. If you're the big underdog, you cannot turn the ball over. And Strickland has protected the ball so well, it just got punched from behind. First time he's ever done it in college. First time he's ever done it. Yeah, over 300 touches, and that is his first fumble. And we had a very clear view of our replay, that that was indeed a fumble and a stupid score by Muse. And you tell Muse to act like he's been there before and don't hurt your field position. I wonder what's up with that. The emotion of this game, Mac, has really caught me and these players apparently are just so wrapped up in it. That's four touchdowns, and two of them have resulted in sportsmanlike conduct penalties. So Tanner Muse comes up with a 63-yard scoop and score, but then lost his head for the moment. And watch the gesture, and this is an automatic penalty every time when you do the throat slash gesture, you're going to get hit with the unsportsmanlike conduct. But what this means now is Clemson is kicking off from the 20-yard line as Syracuse 
did already tonight after their unsportsmanlike conduct post touchdown penalty. You think that Sean Riley can do some damage here as he goes wide. And a good run back for Riley. He'll get to close to the 40 yard line and does get to the 40 yard line. And let's get back down to the field and Jen. Well, hey there, guys. Davo Sweeney said that although they won the national championship last year, they led the world in pass interference penalties. You just saw a couple on that last drive. So what did he do? He put his defensive backs in boxing gloves like this. He told them he wanted them to win with their feet, be a little more physical from the waist down. They've done much better this season with the pass interference penalties, but not on that last drive. All right, Jen, thank you. I hope you get to keep the gloves. I'm just saying. It's a great souvenir to have. Dante Strickland the tailback and every time they've been splitting out the backs and bringing them down as receivers Dungy going to take off and he will sort of a combination slide and just a takedown on his own part to pick up a couple there. But Daniel with another tackle for the Tigers eight and two. And they told Dungy get down but dive for daylight don't take hits. Green pass. Dungy's trying to get rid of it, and he's just going to have to take another hit. He'll get three. Made something out of nothing there. Lawrence and Joseph on the stop. Great awareness with an experienced quarterback. The screen's not there. He knows that people are downfield. He knows the pass rush is softer. He just takes a bad play and turns it into a good play running straight up the field. This is third down. Syracuse has gone for it 13 of 21 on fourth. If they get this close, we could see a fourth down uh, conversion track. A lot of pressure coming from the Tigers. Dungy on the run, and it's caught along the far sideline by Phillips at the Clemson 49. Carter in coverage, first down, orange. You can imagine if Eric Dungy wasn't a great runner, he would have been sacked so many times. Been sacked four times, been running all over the place. And off to Strickland, who just disappears. No gain, a second and ten. O'Daniel among many in orange and white. When you lose a possession offensively like Clemson did last time, scoring on defense, it helps you with a score, but it doesn't give your defense any rest. So they're right back out on the field, and we're seeing Clemson players with their hands on their hips a little bit. Can I ask you something? Why don't we ever, ever talk about offensive players getting tired? Well, because they know, uh, they know where they're going. They don't have to chase <laughs> that somebody. I'm serious about yes. that. I know I'm not trying to be sarcastic because when we have all these conversations about tempo, we always talk about the defense being tired, and we never hear about the offense being tired. The play clock, by the way, while we were talking, was taken down to two, then to one, and then a timeout called here by the Orange. That's their first of three timeouts they have used. We'll take it with them with 6.23 remaining in a tied game in the first half in the Carrier Dome. Well, we're getting the weekend off to a good start with this one tonight. Syracuse dominating in time of possession and in plays and in yards. One of the Clemson touchdowns scored by their defense. On second down, Dungy rolls. Phillips is wide open. The pass is hung up, and it is broken up. Isaiah Simmons, the safety, had time to come over and knock that down. Third and nine coming up. Clemson coaches love this big safety. Red shirt freshman, 6'3", 225 pounds, and he's tall enough that he can go up and break this ball up at the height of the jump. They think he's a superstar in the future. Three out of six third downs tonight. Love the play design moving Dungy away from the rush. And that just is completely uncoordinated. False start, offense. Several offensive line players. Five yard penalty, third down. Dino Babers wandered out to the numbers to say something to one of the officials and was quickly told by the side judge, you better get back to your spot on the sidelines and we could flag you. Had six penalties on the Cuse for 50. When you see offensive linemen all jump like that, I'm sure Coach Babers is saying the defensive line of Clemson's calling our signals and getting us to move. Just like that again. Center move the ball. And here comes Babers again out on the field. 
and he is again sent back quickly, but this time he's doing a little Offside bit more talking. defense, yep. number 42, five-yard penalty, play down. They would talk about simulation of the snap count. It's what happens in that situation. They're saying they say move, they say hut. It happens all the time. There had to be something said because the center moved the ball. And you can see that uh, Christian Wilkins is sitting there pleading his case. Well, the referee had come all the way over for a little bit to speak to Debo Sweeney about it as well. So we're back to third and ten. Let's see if we can get through this one cleanly. We do. A lot of pressure from the Tiger. Dungey gets hit. And coming back to make the catch. Beautifully done is Ismail. Very close to the first down. Fantastic job of Eric Dungey anticipating the break and throwing the ball before Ishmael makes his break. It is fourth down in inches. Play is blown dead and timeout. Before the snap, timeout called. Front, uh, correction, Syracuse, their second timeout of the half. That simply means that Dino Babers out. didn't like the call that he saw. It was a mismatch for his defense. This is so critical. Let's get over here on the sideline, get set, get the right play. Dino Babers not at all satisfied with that call that the receiver was short of the first down is challenging that spot. And they've gone to the replay. The ruling on the field is fourth down. Here's the referee. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was short of the line of the game. Syracuse has used its one challenge for the game. They also have a timeout. He's out of challenges. That was worth the challenge. Gives you a first down, and, and when you're fourth down in inches against this Clemson front, it's not a guarantee. Well, they were actually snapped the ball before that timeout was called or so it seemed and they had Dungey in that shotgun formation probably didn't have the call he wanted and had an assistant upstairs Dave that said hey coach I think we made it yep well they certainly have had plenty of time to figure out what they want to do here the tailback will be Dante Strickland this is such a critical possession with 550 left in the half you'd like to use this 550 and go in and Take a lead into halftime. Dungey's going to go under center here. He'll run the option. He'll get it easily to the 35 and a first down. What a great call. Strength to the field. Run your option back into the boundary. Got a running quarterback that could also pitch it, but he knew what he needed for the first down. five-yard line to catch made by Pierce the tight end looked like it might have been a double move first down got a mismatch to the boundary you've got the tight end tight he comes out and acts like he's blocking for the screen turns it up for a huge play you go to Strickland on the ground Strickland fighting through toward the end zone did he get in he did not Officials say he didn't, and now there's a big scrum as if the ball has come out. But no indication of a fumble from the officials. The head linesman came in with the hand in the air saying he didn't get there. But look how quickly Syracuse is lining up. Inside the one-yard line, Dungey is turned away and may have gone back a foot. Third and goal. And we may have, Dungey could be shaken up. He looks to be in some genuine pain down there at the one yard line. And he's gonna get up. He did not finish the game in South Carolina last year when these teams play. Now, this is a tough decision because if he comes out, you have Zach Mahoney, who is an experienced backup, who can come in. And yep, Dungey's going to have to come out for at least this play. And another timeout taken by Syracuse, and they are out of timeouts in this half. 
And so number 16, Zach Mahoney, is likely to be on the field after this timeout. And he got hit high by Joseph. And you watch his reaction right after the play, and you could tell that something wasn't right. He has to stay he had penetration by Wilkins. Joseph timed it perfectly and jumped over the pile to knock him back. So it was second down and inches, but did he get in on the play before that? And there was no call down from the booth, and you could see he did not get in. So the officials were right on it. As the 11th play of the drive is coming up, and they've got about a yard and a half to go. Now you've got Zach Mahoney, graduate out of the Grange Park, Illinois. Played very little this year, and nope, Dungy cannot come back out. The referee announced that he had to sit out this play. So Mahoney has to come in. Taking the timeout did not save that. He has to be out for one play. This is where head coaches make a lot of money for a reason. Mahoney's <laughs> not a bad Mahoney? runner. He's yeah. not. So he run option. And he burned Clemson in this building a couple of years ago. And field goals aren't an option here. And it was actually kind of hard to hear that through some of the noise in the building. But our referee is now going across the way to speak to Dabo Sweeney to explain all that. Syracuse is getting a timeout back. And Dave, the, it's a good matchup with the older, experienced receivers of Syracuse against the young, inexperienced secondary. It is not a good matchup when you've got to run in a small space against this huge defensive line up front. So, so they'll probably have to do something outside. Maybe a fake. Fake, option, sprint. It'll be Mahoney, and he will get stormed under at the four-yard line. Number 99, once again, Cleveland Farrell, Kendall Joseph, 34. And we are going to see Cole Murphy and the field goal team. Now the issue, is Dungy really capable of finishing this quarter in the game? Wanted to come back out, not allowed. This will be a 21-yard field goal to put Syracuse back in the lead. Mahoney is the holder. Keep that in mind. You would watch your fake here, but I, I really feel like Dino Babers wants a lead. Try to play defense to take the lead into halftime. That's the plan. And after all that drama, we come out with a orange field goal to make it 17-14 with 3.49 to go. Let's go back and take a look at how the Tigers defended a new quarterback. We saw Mahoney two years ago running the option, and that's what this is. It's a run pass option out to your right. You've got your tight end in the flat, but Cleveland Farrell from behind is so quick and so fast that he runs the quarterback down. And Farrell is having a monstrous first half. He's been everywhere, number 99 for the Tigers. And we haven't seen Kelly Bryant since the 1220 mark on the game clock. That's not real time now. I'm just talking about the game clock. Here we are at 349. And all of our fans who have ever had anything hurt knows when you stretch it, you work it, and then sit, you have a tendency to get really stiff. So it'll be interesting to watch Kelly on this series. They're still not trying to run him, but can he scramble and be effective enough following through to throw the ball downfield? You've got Fabian Feaster and Travis Etienne back deep. Etienne. Took one about six yards deep last time out. That's how you avoid that. You hook it into the end zone for the touchback. 
All right, and then we will look forward to that. David Feaster is the tailback for the Tigers. Bryant will take a short drop, throw, and it's dropped. Kane had it in his hands and could not hang on. Second and ten coming up. 16 first downs for Syracuse, only six for Clemson at this point. 38 plays for the Cuse and only 20 for Clemson. So you take away the fumble return for a touchdown. This thing would be in a different place. Clemson needs to take it down and score at this point. Empty set backfield here for Bryant. Two-step drop. This one's in rhythm, and it's caught by the tight end, Milan Richard, and he'll get a first down to the 37-yard line. Tackled by Bennett. Blitz up the middle. Franklin was unblocked. Bryant gets away and throws it away. And was there a receiver in the neighborhood? I think we could all see that there was not any receiver nearby. So that's a significant penalty. And the stiff ankle showed up because he could not get away from the blitzer who came free up inside. Franklin, he couldn't get his feet set. He's limping coming back. He tried to get rid of it, but obviously he wasn't out of the tackle box. Good call by the officials. 22 yards to go now on second down. More pressure right in his face, and it's incomplete. On the screen, he was able to get it toward Feaster, but Jonathan Thomas came in that time and hit Bryant about a blink of an eye after he threw it. It's third and 22. The corner comes on the blitz. It's a really good call, but Feaster, your lead back, drops the ball. Blitz from the top. Feaster lets him go. Probably should have butted him a little bit, but they've lost focus. They've dropped two balls and missed a pickup on the last three plays. Ryan's got a little time here. You can see him sort of limp running and he'll throw this away. That was a rough series for the Tigers offense. Pressing a little bit, dropping balls, missing assignments. Now the defense has got to step up because Syracuse is moving the ball and you've got 308 left and a lot of time for a tempo offense like Syracuse to take it down and get points. You know, Syracuse Number three in the NCAA in third down defense, 25% on third downs. They've held Clemson to 20% in the first half. Spires, very, very high kick. Riley, fair catch. And he'll make it at the 30-yard line. Remember, Syracuse has a timeout with three minutes to go. Let's get more on Eric Dungey from Jen Latta. Well, guys, just a few moments ago, he was sitting on the bench. He had ice on his right shin and was grimacing as the medical staff was attending to his leg. But I just saw him put his helmet back on, and he's headed back out to the field. All right, Jen, thank you very much. Eric Dungey and that timing of being shaken up caused Syracuse to bring out their backup quarterback, Zach Mahoney, for one play, and it didn't work. They ended up getting a field goal after being inches away from a touchdown. And there is Dungey back out there now. We got two quarterbacks who may not be well we know Bryant's now not 100 percent now we'll see how Dunchy is he's going to take off he's going to fire it down deep for Phillips Phillips can't find the ball Ryan Carter was in coverage he couldn't find the ball either there was a little bit of contact there will not be a flag in my opinion this is an uncatchable ball you've got contact if it was holding it was early at this point, he grabs him some. Um, as you look at it, Dave, I think it should have definitely been called holding. I didn't see that when the play was live. Second and ten. Bungie, quick throw, and an excellent tackle by Mark Fields. Kept that from being a bigger play than it was. A gain of four, and Ishmael did not get out of bounds. You'd like to use some clock if you're the Syracuse offense here. 
They're looking to the boundary, and that's their way to slow things down. Let the clock run. You don't want Clemson to get the ball back with time. They're forever shifting this Syracuse attack. They will let them line up anywhere and then go to their proper position to screw up the defensive alignment. Bungie, can he get away with that bad shin? On the run, missed incomplete. And the Tigers' defense holds. Ishmael was the intended receiver. So we're going to get the Syracuse punt team out with Sterling Hoffrichter. And Hoffrichter's done a very good job with very high kicks. And we have not seen Ray Ray McLeod, who's dangerous, able to return one yet. In fact, Mac, you think Ray Ray's close to busting one here? He is so close. I wouldn't punt it to him, but they've punted it so high. They've had good coverage. It's worked so far. High with a wobble, another fair catch, and a crowd. And a flag comes in. Well, there's going to be some field position to turn on this call. interference, kicking team, number 24. 15 yard penalty, touchdown. So Cullen is guilty of that penalty, and that's going to give great field position for Clemson. It's a huge special teams mistake. You have got to give the, the punt returner an opportunity to catch the ball, and he's too close to him. There's sort of a, an area, a no-fly zone, so to speak. It really is. You have to give him enough room to catch the ball. You hate to see a young guy who's got a lot of effort He's trying to make a play on special teams, but he just got too close. C.J. Fuller makes his first appearance at the tailback. Syracuse now 66 yards in penalties. They've been flagged seven times. Bryant, too high. Second down and 10. And he was hit after the play, trying to get it to Hunter Renfro. And he was hit by Chris Slayton, number 95. It'll be second down and 10. The decision by the Clemson coaching staff would be he's, he's not going to be a runner, but can he be effective throwing and following through to help them win this football game? That'll be the question. He hit his first nine passes and his cool off says they run a tunnel screen. Flags are down. Kane's not going to get very much. Bennett in there on the stop. And we're going to have a holding call here against Clemson. They are really out of sync on offense. Pressing. Holding offense, number 75. 10-yard penalty, second down. Mac, the thing I notice is I don't think they're handing the ball off very much. You're looking at the clock, 146 left. You've still got your three timeouts, so you've got plenty of time. But they probably feel like they're ineffective in their running game without their quarterback running the ball because he's been such a big part of that dominant running game. They've been balanced all year. So second down, 20. You get the ball to start the second half, so you don't want to turn it over here or give them a short field and give them more points going in. And now you see the Tigers slowing things down. Seven to get off the snap. Bryant, pocket collapsing, throws Kane, snatching it out of the air. Makes the first miss, but then his gang tackled. He got the penalty yards plus back. Bennett leading the parade. That's a gain of 10. And Bryant is struggling just a little bit. Now they are getting after the quarterback, and they're knocking Kelly Bryant down a lot. And he can't get out of the way. That's the other thing that's tough, and grabbed him around the left ankle there. And that's the bad ankle. Bryant hurled to the ground by Chris Slayton. It's fourth down. And Bryant is not getting up. Slayton really brought him down hard.
hard for him to scramble. He's such an effective scrambler. He turns straight up the field. Slayton's of their best defensive lineman. He takes him and throws him down. It's a clean hit. Mac, this is a little scary because the moment he has moved that I've seen, they're talking to him right now. They have a towel down by the top of his helmet. And a lot of concern in this building here for Kelly Bryant. Still don't notice any movement. And now I see a, a Bryant moving a hand or two in there as the trainers are talking to him, but that's about all I've seen. And now they rolled him over. That's helpful. That's good news. A little bit. Devo Sweeney now joins the crowd. As a head coach, you want to stay away and allow the doctors and trainers to give him a full checkup and evaluation. And then when the time is right, Coach Sweeney, who's concerned about his quarterback, will step in and actually talk to the quarterback and ask him if he's okay. And, and, and he'll be the settling factor. You see Dabo there patting him on the leg and talking to him. Say, get your head up you're, if you're okay. And uh, that also sends a message to the family that may not be here that he's okay. Well, sitting up. The offensive coordinators are getting the second team quarterbacks ready. They've got two guys that have played. Uh, so they've got to make a decision on who goes in if Kelly Bryant doesn't go back in the ballgame. It would be a blessing for Clemson in one way that they'll have halftime coming up in 41 seconds on fourth down. Bryant is now standing, thankfully. And this is going to be a number one topic of conversation in the Clemson locker room as Bryant needs some help to walk off the field. It's certainly not a dirty hit at all, but it looks like the helmet goes right into this turf. You can see right away the reaction on Kelly Bryant. He just went down and been a and tough game for both quarterbacks. Yes, and regardless of whether Kelly comes back tonight or not, if he doesn't play the rest of the game, they do have a week off and they have 15 days before their next ball game. Yeah, they play Georgia Tech on October 28th. So either Zarek Cooper or Hunter Johnson could be the new quarterback for the Tigers when the third quarter comes around. Right now, Clemson's got to play a little more defense. Syracuse has a timeout remaining. Spires, it's a line drive punt. Riley's got a chance to do some damage here from the 16-yard line. And the Tigers' special teams won't let him do it. Simmons in there again. I think O'Daniel, too. All right, how about the game for Eric Dungey tonight, Coach? Well, for Syracuse to have a chance to win this game, Eric had to make some plays with his feet. And when he did that, he stayed away from the rush. Excellent call by Dino Babers on the screen against the safety blitz that leads in for the score. And then they've thrown the ball downfield well to those two great receivers, Ishmael and Phillips. Now, Dungey's a little beat up, too. Shen Latta reported he had ice on his shin earlier. And we're going to have another busted play here. We've had a handful of these tonight. False start here. Fast start, offense number 65. Five-yard penalty, first down. Anyway, so Dungey has a bit of a shin issue. Bryant came in, nicked up with a bad ankle, and now could, needed help to get into the Tigers' locker room right here before halftime. So uh, They're just going to hand it off and, and see if they can squirt one to, to try to get out to midfield so they can throw a Hail Mary or something because they're not going to take any chances at this point in the field. Head 17-14. They would have taken this about two hours ago. They'll take the lead going into halftime. Clemson has the ball. And it here to Dante Strickland. And the Tigers defense 
will give him a short game. Farrell with another stop. And that should be the end of the half. Great first half for Syracuse. Clemson's got to go in and regroup. Talk about the quarterback position in the second half. Down to four seconds. Now they're going to get one off right before the half. Dungey will throw it, and it's incomplete, and that is the end of the first half. A lot of drama coming up in the second half. 17-14, Syracuse over Clemson. Let's join Adnan Burke, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer in studio right now. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN, all part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. And this is a game that's raising eyebrows all around the nation right now with Syracuse leading number two Clemson here in the Carrier Dome, 17-14. And the Tigers will not have Kelly Bryant available for the rest of the game. And that's straight from the head coach, Dabo Sweeney. Mac, you've had to deal with the situation before, changing quarterbacks at halftime. Give us an idea of what that's like for Clemson. Well, in national championship game, Colt McCoy goes down. We had to work our way through the first quarter. And then we come back, and at halftime, you have to sit down, decide who you're going to play number one, and then cut that playbook back and challenge everybody else around them to step up their play. And we're going to find out right now who the quarterback's going to be because Clemson gets the ball to start the half to the 25-yard line. But first, Jen Lapp. Well, guys, I just got a chance to talk to Dino Babers out of the locker room. He said, we have to hold this first series, get the ball back, and then score. I asked him about the status of his starting quarterback. He said, hurting but available. I also asked him if the defense changes if Bryant can't go. He said absolutely not. They're a tough team and they're deep. And the answer is number six, Zarek Cooper, the redshirt freshman from Jonesboro, Georgia, is the quarterback replacing the injured Kelly Bryant. Had a concussion near the end of the second quarter and will not return. They go to the ground and Feaster will get nothing, maybe even lose a yard. So here is Cooper. He's completed 50% of his passes on the season for only 57 yards. He does have a touchdown. He has run a couple of times for 11 yards. He's facing second down and 10 right now. Feaster comes back, low snap. He handles it, gets it off to Ray Ray McLeod on the tunnel screen, makes a tackle, and McLeod will get eight. To the 33, third down and two coming up. New quarterback, you cut your playbook down, you give him things that he can be successful with. Option on first down, quick screen on second down. Really important third down conversion here for Clemson. I think they run the option or get it in Feaster's hands. On the run. In trouble now, ad libbing the McLeod and his too high flag is down at the 48 yard line. Christopher Frederick was in coverage. Holding defense, number three, 10 yard penalty, first down. And it's Frederick who is hit with a penalty. They came on third down with their old standby. They went to the rub route for Rempro. He had him open, but the young quarterback couldn't turn his shoulders quickly enough, and he threw the ball deep. The ball now in the Tigers' 23-yard line. Feaster stays in the tailback spot, and you're looking at Zedrick Cooper, the quarterback. Feaster has a little bit of a hole, but that closed quickly. He got a couple of yards. Evan Foster, who's also playing hurt tonight, number 14 for the Orange, came up very quickly to stop that for a three-yard game. And I think if you're Dabo Sweeney, you went in at halftime and said, man, we've got to be more balanced. We've got to run the ball and keep it away from the Syracuse offense the second half. Quick drop, quick throw, slant, caught, McLeod tripped up. He's four yards short of the first down. Frederick stopped him there. to get to the Syracuse 47 yard line to keep this drive alive. Hunter Renfro has been their third down guy, third and 10, but definitely third and five. So let's find him. And when we find him, you're probably gonna see an option right. He's to the top of the uh, bottom of the screen. 
He's the slot inside right at the Ernie Davis on the E. They bring a blitz. They throw in the direction of the blitz, and it's batted down. Fourth down and four coming up. Thought there was an overload to the right. They've tried to hit the slant with man coverage to the backside. Really good play by Evan Foster. Now the sophomore from West Bloomfield, Michigan, breaks this up. Get your hands up. Great job, Evan. He had Kane on the inside slant wrap for the first down. Spires in the punt again. And Riley waiting from around the eight yard line. Spires. Riley backing up. Gets it go over his head and bat it down. Did they save it? That was Isaiah Simmons who saved it, and it's going to be at the one yard line. 50 yard punt. An incredible play by Simmons and teammates to give Syracuse the worst possible starting field position. So after that fine punt and tremendous special teams play by Isaiah Simmons, the Q starts at their own one. So Mac, how aggressive do you think Syracuse ought to be here? Dino Babers made a really good point. You got to keep playing. You got to try to win. They'll pick up about four there. Good tackle made there by number 31. And Dave, that's the 44th play for them, and they're trying to get 90 plus to 100. 270 yards in the first half, 16 first down, 17 minutes and a half of time of possession. Second and seven, they'll go to the ground, and now they'll give themselves a little bit more room to work with. They're short of the first down, but not by much. But now this is huge for Clemson. This is points for the Clemson team. If they stop them here, get a short punt, Got a short field. You've got to stop them on this end of the field with, if you're Clemson. And they cannot. First down for Syracuse. Strickland with a carry in the first down. That's a huge first down for the Orange, and they may pick up the pace here now. Miscommunication that time. I've not seen that very often between Dungey and his receivers. Phillips was the intended receiver, and that play kind of fell apart. So it'll be second and ten. Jen gave us the report about Dungey's shin. We'll have to watch him in the second half early and make sure that he can step and throw the ball and follow through. You see the numbers there. Third quarters have been very successful for Syracuse when they have the ball and for Clemson when they don't. So we'll see how that holds up here. Well, they've got Chris Elmore, the big fullback slash tight end, all the way at the top of your screen. They go underneath. The pass was tipped. The umpire says the pass was tipped. There'll be no interference against Tanner Muse for the contact with the receiver. It'll be third down and ten. Now you're Brent Venables. You've got to make a decision. Do you come after him? Do you have a three-man rush? What do you do understanding they're a really, really good screen team? So this will be a good call by Brent. Syracuse making some late changes and not at top speed. They bring Devin C. Butler back in, number five. They take out Elmore. They're four out of ten and third downs. They bring some pressure. And another big miscommunication with Phillips and Dungey. That was ten yards over his head, and Syracuse will have to punt. Really big series by the Clemson defense. They didn't hold them inside the 10, but now they've got them putting from the 14 yard line. This should give them great field position, even if he gets off a great punt and uh, you fair catch it. Ray Ray McLeod at the 45 yard line has not had a chance against Paul Frichter, who's been outstanding. But this one, not so good. It's going to be much shorter. Going to hook back into the field and get touched at the 43 yard line of Syracuse. That's the first time the redshirt sophomore has misfired on one. <laughs> Quick throw, catch made by Kane at around the 36 yard line. As Eric Cooper has taken over, if you're just joining us, Kelly Bryant right before halftime was knocked out 
on a play. And Dabo Sweeney already announced that he is not returning Bryant with a concussion. So at the moment, the redshirt freshman is the quarterback, Zarek Cooper, number six. With Adam Choice is tailback. On second down, it's Choice. And he'll fight to the 30, and that'll be a first down. Paris Bennett on the stop. It's very obvious at halftime, Clemson got together offensively and said, let's give him some runs. We've got to be more balanced. We only had 42 yards rushing early, and let's give him some simple throws. We've got to get our momentum back. And come on, defense, you got to get the ball back for us. Cooper is three out of four for 17 yards. Choice will stay in the tailback spot. Fake the jet sweep to McLeod. Cooper in a little bit of trouble. Has some room if he wants to take off left. Throws to Renfro. That is a sick catch. What a catch. I'm like you, Dave. I'm wanting to yell at the young quarterback. Run! You've got all kinds of green space. But that's an unbelievable catch. Gets his hands up under it. Hand-eye coordination, unbelievable for the first down. Hashtag that SC top 10, I think. Absolutely. Now, quick throw behind Renfro and incomplete. That'll slow things down. It'll be second down and 10. That is remarkable. There wasn't even a moment to think that we might have to have the replay booth look at it. No, it's definitely a top 10 catch because there are very few receivers in America that could get to it, much less keep their hands underneath it and secure the ball and smart enough to hold it up so the official could see it. ETN is now the tailback number nine. Cooper Remember, Daniel. Clemson hasn't been good at kicking field goals. No, they've missed one tonight and badly. Five seconds to snap. They get it off in time. In trouble and swallowed up almost alive by Alp Robertson. That's a loss of six. Well, it's a communication area. You start looking as a quarterback at the sideline, and Cooper's not sure what to do. He, he changes the play, and obviously not everybody was on the same page. Some guys trying to block as receivers, some trying to run. Be smart here. Keep the right to kick. Cooper, McLeod to the 13, and McLeod gets him closer. They're still several yards short of the first down. They're going to be one out of eight on third down conversions, but they have made this a reasonable field goal if they want to try it for Alex Spence, and I don't Coach see him Sweeney coming out. Coach not sending any man. He's going for the fourth down. Nope, here he goes. Thought about it, though. They had a hard discussion. They said, come on, Coach, we need points. We need points. And you can see him go, okay, yep. I know. <laughs> Somebody yep. really got in his ear. And no, it's probably Venables. We're going to get it, Coach. We're going to play defense. Well, they got to hurry guys up here. to go for it. Down to four. 30-yarder. They get it off in time. And that one is good. And a good job by Will Sweeney, the coach's son, to handle the high snap. Zarek this Cooper. That's why you got to be simple with your coordination because young quarterbacks get confused. Confuses the offensive line up front, turns one loose, big sack. One of the real great coaches and personalities in this game. Yeah, I love Coach Mack. He was a good friend and great man. Here is Sean Riley about the one yard line. And he is looking for a spot that is not there. He's going to be stopped at the 18 yard line. But like Clemson tonight, you are who you are. If you're good enough in Miami, you got to step up and win the game. Clemson's playing with more urgency right now. First carry today for Tyrone Perkins. He'll get a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight coming up. And if Clemson's the number two team in the country without their starting quarterback, they still have to step up and win this ball game on the road. Well, the poor punt helped them into a 39 or 30 yard field goal. Dungey looking, receivers are covered. He'll take off. And he's got some room here. Dungey down the sideline. Breaks free into Clemson territory and is brought down at around the 37 yard line and a touchdown saving tackle by Kayvon Wallace. The quarterback's feet are invaluable in college football. 
Nobody accounts for him. There's no spot on him. So he outruns Joseph to the corner and turns up. It was a 45-yard run to the 35, and the next carry by Perkins will get inside the 30 or on the 30, they're going to say, and five quick yards. Always made me mad. We would score, and I'd say, defense, shut them down. Syracuse moving the ball again. Now a fake. One-on-one. -on -one. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Syracuse Ishmael. Four plays, 82 yards, and a minute and 15. The leading receiver in the nation comes through, and one-on-one, -on -one, he is so tough to cover. Syracuse just said, we're not going away. What an answer. The big play, the run by Dungy. And remember, he had ice on his shin earlier in the game. But Dino Babers told Jen, he's hurting but he'll play. And a great matchup, Dave. When you're in coaching, it's all about matchups. They took their best receiver, leading receiver in the country. They locked him up with a safety, and he beats him deep for the score. Syracuse has found the end zone more often than anybody has this year against Clemson, and a field goal, 24-17. This environment now is cooking in this dome. But remember, this Clemson team won at Louisville, and they've won at Virginia Tech this year. They've won 12 in a row on the road. They are hard to rattle. Line drive kick, bit of a hook to it, and a hook got a bounce. Huge so, mistake. Yep, 35-yard line is where this ball is going to go. Huge mistake. Come on, kicker. Kick it out of bounds. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. That is the fifth time that he has done that this year, Cole Murphy. Zarek Cooper out again for the injured Kelly Bryant. And he'll keep it. And he'll get to about the 40-yard line. he will give him five, second down and five. First time we have seen Cooper run. Yeah, you're the offensive coaches of Clemson now. We know it's going to be a tight game. There's no blowouts here. Let's try to stay ahead of the chains. Get four here, four there. Good first down play. ETN is the tailback, number nine. Quick throw, catch, Kane, trying to make a spin move. He'll get the first down. It's going to be brought down at the 48-yard line by Juwan Dowles, who's in for Scoop Redshaw and Evan Foster. And if you're Syracuse on defense, keep them in front of you. Don't give them anything easy and try to get a turnover. Strip the ball, knock a ball loose, tip a ball. Cooper, six out of eight for 49 yards. Hands off to Etienne. Etienne, look up to the speed. Clemson's a point away from tying it up. He is a bad man. He's a fast man. Wow. 52 yards. This guy's 200 pounds. Back. He's not a little back. He is spectacular. He's real and he's spectacular. And he quietened this crowd really quickly, and it was a great job of blocking up front by the offensive line. I think we see Clemson run the ball and be much more balanced the rest of this game. And just like that, watch how quickly he goes from zero to 60 here, Mac. They cleaned him out, pull both guard, backside tackle, turned up on the power play. ATN runs him into the end zone for a touchdown. That electrifying 52-yard ETN run knotted up at 24. This is our fourth tie. The number two team in the country has not led yet tonight. If you take a look at the electrifying Travis ETN. He is a freshman out of Jennings, Louisiana. Riley, four-yard line. Trying to get to the sideline. 
And again, the Clemson coverage is good. He'll get to around the 20. Let's take a look at what Eric Dungey has done tonight for the comfort zone, brought to you by Wrangler. Well, the major reason that this game is close is Dungey has handled everything so well at quarterback. He throws the screen, he throws the ball downfield. He's made plays with his feet, so he's thrown for three touchdowns, 226 yards, he's run for 70 yards. This guy is playing at a very high level and keeping this game close. He went out for one play in the second quarter to have a shin that looked at, and he came back in and has played very well. He set up the last touchdown with a big run. A lot of movement again by Syracuse. Dungey with a little bit of time here and can't find an open receiver. And he does the right thing. And a big flag as somebody did the wrong thing. That's just another big mistake. And that's Austin Bryan, an outstanding defensive end, but he, he makes a big mistake here. If this was a coverage sack, you cannot hit the quarterback when he turns that ball loose. And no reason to. No. 99 yards and penalties for Clemson. Yeah, big penalty there. Three man rush, really good coverage sack. There wasn't anybody open downfield. It's a throwaway. You come up from second 10, and now you're back to first and 10. Dungey will keep it, and he won't get very far. Number 45, Chris Register out of Greensboro, North Carolina, stopped him for no gain. Tells you the coaches think that Dungey's healthy, or they wouldn't be running him on a quarterback read option. Well, Dino Babers told Jen Latta that he's it. He's the guy. He's hurt, but he's going to play. Changing formation, trying to get mismatches. More pressure. Dungey flushed. And they don't hit him this time. <laughs> he was being pursued by Kendall Joseph, who laid off. We are seeing that the Clemson defense is playing with much more urgency. It's a holding call against Syracuse. Do you take the penalty here, Mac? Make it I second do. and long. I and back them up. Yeah, back them up. You're trying to get a stop. You're trying to get turnovers. Don't give them a, a third down and ten. Put them where their play selection changes. Now you've got to go screen draw or try to throw it deep. And that's exactly what Davo Sweeney did. It'll be second down and twenty. O'Neill stays in at the tailback position. Dungy, there's a tunnel screen. And Syracuse did not get much with that as Dexter Lawrence was able to stop it. And there's another flag down at the 25 yard line. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist, number six offense. That penalty is half the distance to the goal, second down. Yeah, that penalty on the tight end, Pierce. Back him up. You can't block low downfield. That's 10 penalties. So that's 19 accepted penalties in this game tonight. Looks like Clemson's going to turn this one down because they feel like they're good enough with third down and 20. And one of the best defenses in the country, their top 10 in four categories. Scoring total yards, yards per play, and sacks, they probably are good. Yeah, we're seeing the Clemson defense we've heard about all year. A lot of intensity. They're tackling well. They're putting pressure on the quarterback. Tough play call for Dino Babers here on third and 20. As they try to get it all with Ishmael or Phillips. They're two great receivers. Dungy, that's exactly the call. There's a bit of a push off, but no call. No, there comes the flag now. That is Ishmael who pushed off on fields, and the question is, are they going to call him for it? And they did. This is an obvious call. He's covered, you've got the back shoulder throw. He can't push him down and then go back for the ball. That's the second time he has been called for interference tonight. Anytime you get that much separation, as an offensive player, you've probably pushed. Now we're at the 13 yard line, and they've got to get to the 44, 46, excuse me. 
Now field position changes completely. They're probably going to run us. You have to go screen draw or sling it deep, Dave, to try to get out of there and hope you get an interference call. Well, don't turn it over. Wouldn't be surprised if we get one. Clemson came after In him. trouble. And he's sacked inside the five by Cleveland Farrell. You can see that Coach Venerables talked to him at halftime. Because he stirred him up, came with the blitz from the boundary. The guys got after it. Kendall Joseph is back there, but you cannot put yourself in long yardage situations and protect against this great dominating front seven of Clemson. It's fourth and 42. You've got the punter, Hawk Richter, in the very back of the end zone. So this has to be perfect on the snap. It is. Ray Ray McLeod, fair catch at the 41-yard line. So the Tigers with great field position. Now, take you back to the beginning, earlier in the game, late in the second quarter. The starting quarterback for Clemson, Kelly Bryant, is knocked out and knocked out of the game. One of the hard decisions you have to make as a coach as well, because he, he hits his head here. It wasn't the ankle, but he was really struggling on the ankle. You have to make decisions. Is your backup quarterback healthy better than your starting quarterback hurt? And that's a tough decision to make because you really trust the guy that's been leading your team. So, Zarek Cooper took over at the start of this quarter. On the run, he throws, coming back, Renfro with another crazy catch at the 30-yard line. What hands. Jonathan Thomas in coverage, it's a gain of 11. Yeah, body control and hands are unbelievable for Renfro. It's like he's got stick them on it or something. He is so flexible, he turns all the way back inside and makes another impossible catch. Yeah, he is a real athlete to be able to do those kind of things. Feaster on the run. You know, Mac, I saw Clemson in person earlier, and this looks like what I saw before. Now, admittedly, we don't have the quarterback run game here, but now we're seeing them start to, I uh, hate to use this cliche, but pound the rock more than they did in the first half. Yeah, this is who they are. This is who they want to be. Syracuse talked them out of running the ball in the first half. Now with a young quarterback, they said, let's pound and be balanced. And that means the offensive line is starting to respond. Meester again, he'll fight to the 22-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Syracuse doesn't have a lot of depth on defense. So they're trying to keep the Syracuse offense on the bench and pound this undersized defensive front. I wouldn't be surprised here to see them go for four downs because they're only one for eight on third down. We got a timeout. The former wide receiver at Alabama, Dabo Sweeney, went about 30 yards down the field at full speed to get that timeout call. Give Dabo credit for settling his team down with the young quarterback, stirring his defense up, and you can see he's challenging those offensive linemen because they need to be able to run the football the entire, entire fourth quarter. ETN is back in, number nine. Cooper will keep it, spin, and fight for the first down. Well, what a call. And Cooper's 220. Yes, 6'2", 220. He is not a little guy. No, he's a big body, and he's settling down, and he's getting more confidence as this game grows. On third down, keep it in his hands. Don't have the opportunity to fumble. Pressure up the middle. Cooper gets hit, and he is down by Paris Bennett. Number 30 came in unblocked, and a loss back to the 27. You gotta love Paris Bennett. He's humble, but he's quick and he's tough. He comes on the blitz. He comes free. He slides around the running back and hits the quarterback flush and throws him to the ground. This guy is a very tough, smart, quality football player that helps lead this defense. Senior out of Detroit. ETN stays in the tailback spot. They give it to him. He just hits those holes so quickly. He'll get to the 21-yard line. Let's go back to, down to the field and jam. Well, Paris Bennett, it does not come natural for him. Paris Bennett, that is. It doesn't come natural for him to lead the guys, but he's realized that he's more successful. He's been more he has had to get in front of the young guys, tell them how things go. And I was told that he has one of the highest football IQ
Thank you. It's third down and a dozen. Under a minute to go in the quarter. Keep the right to kick. No turnovers. To the end zone. Way too high. Renfro was around the five-yard line. And it's going to be fourth down and 12. And Debo Sweeney makes a little kick with his left foot. Kicking motion. And that means he's going to send out Alex Spence. You have got to give a lot of credit to Brian Ward and this Syracuse defense. They're under man. They are fighting their guts out to hang in there and win this football game. This from 39 with the holder being Will Sweeney. It's not going to fake here, Dave. Too, too far. Okay. Fourth and 12. Fakes off. Snaps have been a little high tonight. That one looks pretty good. The kick, however, is not. Syracuse holds with 45 seconds to go. Remember, the great field position Clemson had at the 41-yard line. That sack by Bennett ruined Mace. everything. Yeah, missed field goals like a turnover. And it really hurts your momentum. You had everything going. Young kicker looks like he's stepping with his plant foot, his left foot, too close to the ball. And he's like my golf swing on a drive, Dave. He's pulling it across his body to the left. So that's a... Uh, uh, very, very poor technique for him. He's got to do a better job. Gets his head up too soon, and when you get your head up, like in golf, you pull the ball left. So Eric Dunty takes over. Waiting seconds of this third quarter. And that will be the tight end. Ravion Pierce, the junior out of Plantation, Florida, gets a first down and a gain of 10. That's been their favorite play of the night. Fake your quick screen. Act like you're going to block as a tight end or wide receiver and slip behind them on the wheel route. Now Dante Strickland is a tailback. He'll get it. Pops up the middle. Strickland breaking a tackle. Breaking another one. He'll get to the 40. They'll be two yards, almost one yard short of the first down. The longer Syracuse can hang in this ball game, the pressure goes completely to Clemson. Strickland had put his shoe back on. We've already seen Dungy throw his shoe in the end zone before a play. Strickland got his on. Dungy, shoulder fake. Can't find anybody open. Now under a lot of pressure. The long throw incomplete. And that'll be the final play in a quarter. A.J. Terrell in coverage against Steve Ishmael. Eight versus eight. The number two team in the country. Two years ago, struggled in this dome against Syracuse, and they're struggling again against a fired-up orange squad. Can Syracuse pull the upset, or will the defending national champs show why they're number two? We start the fourth quarter with the number two ranked team in the country in this ACC matchup on ESPN, tied with Syracuse 24-24 three weeks ago in Clemson in Death Valley they were tied 7-7 with Boston College and one going away this is a much different environment and Kelly Bryant wasn't injured on third and short Dungy with the keeper and a first down so Kelly Bryant knocked out of this game late second quarter with a concussion Dabo Sweeney telling us at halftime that it was way off the field and Bryant was out the screen here Pierce made one miss and he'll get it right to the middle of the S before Christian Wilkins brings him down seven yard pickup when you start looking at the number of plays Syracuse has run when does the Clemson front start getting tired and ineffective on pass rush oh fumble on the snap and they'll just eat it here that's the smart move to make Strickland fell on the ball that's going to take a loss back to the 44 and sets up third down at nine yeah, you can't make these mistakes and win. You're second down and short. You're moving the ball. You've got confidence. It was a low snap, but Eric has got to make sure he bends his knees, even though he's a little bit tired, a little bit stiff, and keep his eyes on that ball before he turns his eyes away and drops the snap. Now, Syracuse has had the ball 62 plays to 49 for Clemson, so it's got to be wearing on that Clemson defense. Pressure here. A lot of pressure coming on Dungy. He throws. Ismail, big flag coming up here. Ishmael locked up with Trayvon Mullen. And the interference will go against Clemson. Well, it seems like either Ishmael gets a catch or a flag. Well, he's so big at 6'2", and he runs good routes. He plays good with his hands. 
and they're fully aware he's got enough deep balls in this game. Mullet just grabs him and throws him to the ground. So to the 41 yard line of the Tigers we go in a game where Clemson has never led. Longer this game stays tight, pressure goes to Clemson. Incomplete. Maximum effort given that time by Phillips. Second down to 10 coming up. Tonight, you can see why Ishmael is the number one receiver in the country. He's strong, he's got great hands, and he has given that Tiger defense a fit. On the night, see his numbers with one touchdown catch when he was isolated against the safety. He and Phillips are the real deal. Yep. Look, Tigers coach told us that yesterday. Dungey. And there's Phillips. That's a first down, 30 yard line. And when you're having trouble covering Ishmael and Phillips one on one, you have to play zone. When you're playing zone, you have the creases with more people open. We have a Clemson player down, and that is A.J. Terrell, who made the tackle. I don't like people booing when, when a Boy, young man goes down. I'm glad you said that, Matt, because if you didn't, I was going to. No, I, I understand the football and the way it's played, but these young men get hurt. Let's take care of them. Let Dr. Sale. Watch what happens here to number eight, A.J. Terrell. There. Knee into the helmet. Just an accident of the game, unfortunately. The good news is that he was able to slowly walk up with just a little bit of assistance, and he was escorted directly into the locker room. First down, 10. Run up the gut by Strickland. He fights for an additional yard. He'll get three in the 27. There is a concern for some defensive coaches that we talk so much about targeting that defensive backs are going to start going too low. So there's got to be a fine line there which, uh, to find the, the perfect line for safety. And people are worried about knee injuries in that situation, Absolutely. too, an increase of that because, okay, I can't hit high. I've got to bring him down somehow. Absolutely. Syracuse playing unlike Syracuse with this much slower pace. Dungey. Being chased, he'll throw, and it'll be knocked away and complete around the 20-yard line. So here comes a big third down and seven, but don't be shocked if it gets the fourth down at anything, unless it's really long, to see Syracuse go for it. Absolutely, because they've gone for it coming into this game 13 of 21 times, but you made a great point. They're wanting that clock to run a little bit now. You're, you're, in, a, you're in a game, it's a tight game, so you want to see those ticks going off very quickly. Eleventh run, play. clock, run, I used to say. <laughs> 11th play of the drive coming up. Get it done and go home. Flagged her down as Dungey will be sacked. Let's see what the flag is all about. It's thrown at the line of scrimmage on the near sideline. Pharrell with another Off sack. Side. Offside, look at this. Austin Bryant with another key penalty and instead of a sack it's going to be third and very manageable couple of yards. Well and that's the second penalty. On Bryant trying to get to the quarterback on third down but uh, he, he's had two offsides penalties and he's had a late hit on the quarterback so uh, this young man's got to wake up here he's hurting his team because he went he takes his team from third down and ten uh, fourth down and ten long field goal to third and two. Strickland. This is going to be close. If they don't get it, there's a high percentage that they will go for it. Absolutely. So, in a way, well, one official has already got the closed fist, which syndicates fourth down, and that's exactly what it is. Now, Dungey has gone under center before in these situations, and he does it again. And now he backs him. Yeah, he saw those big guys. In there. <laughs> he said, oh, okay, this don't look so good. I'd have backed away to Buffalo if I'd seen that. One for one today on fourth down. Now they go shotgun. Play of the game. Strickland. He'll power his way to the first down with a push from the quarterback. 
It was O'Daniel who tried to make the play, but he didn't have good leverage, and it's first down for the Orange. Boy, you like Eric Dungey. Hands the ball off. Guy st Dorian steps up and has him there, and Dungey pushes him for the first down. They stay on the ground and get to the 15-yard line behind the junior from Dayton, New Jersey, Dante Strickland. They, that's like the bush push. <laughs> USC beats Notre Dame. It wasn't legal to push him in then. They've made it legal now. Great play by the quarterback. More flags. This one. Full start offense. All 11 players never got set before the snap. Five-yard <laughs> penalty, second down. All 11. You don't hear that one often. That just meant that Eric didn't allow enough time to get set. If it's one guy, you can blame him, but when you're going so fast and you're a little tired with the pressure in this game with 11 minutes left, let him get set. 11 penalties per side. Tyrone Perkins has checked it now, number 26 out of Glenhead, New York, home of Stratomatic, and he's a junior. Clemson is coming from the boundary. A lot of pressure here. Throws toward Perkins, who makes the catch, and the turf monster got him at the 20. Boy, what a great defensive call. They had the pressure from the boundary, and then Kendall Joseph, who runs about as fast as Strickland, was all over him when he had the flare out to the field. So you're back to third down and long, third down and 12. Try to get half of it, then you can make a decision on fourth down. Clemson coming again, St. Blitz from the boundary. Wide open at the top of your screen. And Phillips will get, excuse me, Butler will get cut down short the first down, but he gets to about the 11. They only need three here, and they're gonna bring out the kicker, Cole Murphy. You want the lead, you put the pressure on Clemson with the lead with 10 minutes left to go. He's not gonna fake this one because he sent him out there too quickly. Usually if you fake it, you had to tell somebody. He's inside the 48. Deep points. We well, think Clemson's missed two. They could have 30. Got to protect. Not much pressure. No trouble that time for Cole Murphy, the senior from California. Put Syracuse back in the lead with 9.41 to go in the fourth quarter. The number two team in the country has never led, and they trail again by three. Well, here is the Newhouse School of Public Communication at Syracuse University, one of the best broadcast journalism programs in the country. Here's our own Sean McDonough, among many ESPNers who have made it out of Syracuse into Bristol. Sean, of course, we call the Monday night football game with John Gruden coming up. Here we go again. The Syracuse kicking off with the lead. Last kick went out of bounds. This one is driven deep. And this time, ETN will take a knee. So it'll be a touchback to the 25 yard line for the redshirt freshman quarterback, Zarek Cooper. A little pitch here to Feaster. And Feaster to the 35 yard line. Almost. They're going to say he's just short of it. He'll gain nine. Tackle there by, by Roger Williams. Yeah, smart play by Cooper. He gets to the corner. He sees that they can make eight, nine yards. He pitches it on out. Impressed with Feaster. 220 pounds, sprint champion. Just a sophomore. You got Adam Choice now coming in. Feaster leaves for the moment anyway. Seven carries, 57 yards. Make the choice. Quick throw. Kane, the catch. He stood up immediately. Ridden out of bounds, but it'll be a first down for the Tigers. Dowell's on the stop. That's where the confidence that Clemson's built up over the years is really valuable. They think they're going to win. Syracuse isn't sure right now. Dino Babers is trying to get them to a point they think they can win. Clemson knows that they're supposed to win. Cooper is 8 of 11 for 68 yards in relief of Kelly Bryant, who's knocked out of this game literally that's going to be a very short game if any gain at all for choice second to ten Syracuse defense is playing so hard tonight they're tackling in space 
They've given up a couple of big plays, but they are playing their hardest. Feaster back in. Tunnel screen. Renfro taken off. Renfro's got some speed, and he will get into Hughes territory at the 45 yard line, tackled by Frederick. Caught the screen, planted his foot like a veteran, turned north and south, and turns it into a first down on second down and 10. He has five catches for 65 yards. I won a national championship. He's not going back down in this game. In trouble. Gets away. Has some room. Oh, no. Tripped up. What a play by Slate. It looked like Cooper had some room to at least get back to the line of scrimmage, and Slate dumps it for a four yard loss. Folks, Slate is six foot four, 315 pounds after playing all night. What quickness and speed this guy has. He is the best defensive lineman on the Syracuse football team. Pressure. Cooper gets rid of it quickly. Caught by Kane on the other sideline. He's trying to fight for an additional yard or two and is thrown out of the 42 by Foster and by Frederick. They're going to need seven here on third down. And if you're Clemson at this point with 642 left, this is two down territory. Try to get half of it. Then you can go for fourth down if you need it. Too high, not even close. Two of 11 on third down tonight for Clemson. So Syracuse's defense against third down continues to be remarkable. Yeah, because of the play call and the incomplete pass, you're not going to go for fourth down and six. You're going to try to punt them down and hold them because you've got too far to go. It's also not a very good fake area. So I think you punt this one down inside the 10 and depend on your defense to get the ball back. Well, it's one of the best in the country. Syracuse runs their defense off, finally puts their punt team out there. And Spires going to throw it down deep. And it's incomplete. They did go for the fake, and it failed. They sent Tanner Muse down the safety, and it didn't work. And Dabo Sweeney is unloading on his punter right now. They're watching the replay on the big board. It's not going to turn out any better when you look up there either. No. That's a tough one. Great play for Syracuse. Takes momentum back. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing and participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And today, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Syracuse takes over after the failed fake of the 41-yard line their own. And they'll go up the gut and pick up six solid yards from Dante Strickland. Yeah, Clemson's defense has been out there a long time. The last time Syracuse had the ball, 16 plays, 68 yards on their drive. Six minutes and four seconds, 30 yard field goal. We only have five minutes and 51 seconds left, and Syracuse is going to slow it down and allow that clock to run. But they've still got to try to win the game. They can't get conservative here. That's not who they are. This will be their 73rd play. They only like to get as close to 100 as is possible. Stay on the ground. Strickland against that tough defensive line is going to be stopped two yards short. There's a gigantic third and two call. Dexter Lawrence in there, preseason All-American, along with his running buddy, Christian Wilkins. They go quickly this time, and it will be, it should be a first down, and is. So they use the tempo to their advantage. That time, after all that slowness, all of a sudden, they go very quickly and get the first down. 
Coming up following our game, Washington State and Cal. That game will be played. And then we are going to have on ESPN3 and on the ESPN app coverage of coaches' press conferences, both of them, and who knows what else. 450 left. Coaches have a four-minute offense. And that's when you're at the ball end of the ball game. Use the clock. Try to keep the ball and not have a kick to finish this game. Dungey will keep it this time. And a late pitch to the 45 and to the 44, and he stayed in bounds. Urban Phillips did the one smart thing there. He did not get out of bounds. We'll do something smart, too, and talk to Ed and Burke. <laughs> yeah, we do, brother. Thank you so much. And now Syracuse going back to being slow again here on second down. They run the ball four straight times on this drive. And no need really to do anything else but until Clemson can stop them. Dungey looks like he wanted to pitch back. Now he's in trouble and now he is down. Sacked again. Once again it's 99 and also 42 Christian Wilkins. Cleveland Farrell has been spectacular for the Tigers defense tonight. It's yeah. third and 11. That was a mistake by Eric Dungey. As good as he's played tonight, that can be a forward pass. It's the shovel play up underneath. He wasn't there. Throw it into the ground and then go back and play second down and six. You saw on the replay that Christian Wilkins got in that passing lane in front of Strickland. Play clock at 10. Huge third down. Clemson's got to get off the field. And you don't want to give Syracuse, they're going to let the clock run down, call timeout. Don't let Syracuse get close enough to go for a fourth and two or three. Each team down to the wire with 3.08 to go. Clemson and Syracuse, two timeouts each. Our score in time sees a 3.08 to go. Syracuse leads the number two team in the nation, 27 24, facing third down and 11. Clemson usually defeats unranked teams. They did not defeat Pitt at home last year, but ultimately it did not cost them in the playoffs. Dante Strickland is the tailback. Dungey under pressure. The throw caught. Sticks. First down. Steve Ishmael. guys are the real deal in the passing game. Phillips and Ishmael, two of the best receivers in the country, are showing why tonight. And that's a pressure throw by Dungey and really good protection. Now you let the clock run. Game still not near over. Clemson has two timeouts. They have to make a stop here. When do you start using the timeout for Clemson? I always used them under two minutes. I wanted to save them till right at the end. They've got to stop the run. They're going to win this game. They've got to step up and stop the run, strip a ball. They have to be aggressive right now. I'm afraid the defense is worn out. And Clemson uses one of those timeouts. And that's because they're not stopping the run. You wouldn't normally use it this early, but you cannot allow five yards on first down in the running game and letting Syracuse get ahead of the chains. We've got Washington State Cal following us, and we're sitting on the possibility of an unbeaten team being knocked from those ranks. Clemson has never led in this game. They trail now by three. Mac, let's review that play that got them the first down and put them in great position to win here if they get on the first down. Well, it shows you the trust that uh, Coach Papers has in his quarterback. He fakes the run, which controls the rush. He's got one on one with an older guy and a young receiver. First down. Stop the run on this play. Strickland coming to the game with 298 touches and no fumbles. And he fumbled tonight and was returned for a touchdown by Tanner Mutes. So yep. Clemson's offense has only managed 17 points. They've had two missed field goals as well. And for Clemson to win, they have to get a stop or a turnover and at least force a kick because then they have a chance to take it the length of the field and score because they'd be down by six. 13 to snap it. Strickland to 78 yards on the ground. They're going to snap it with three seconds left and try to use all of the clock. Mo Neal is now the tailback, number 21. They need three for the first down. We have whistles. We have a flag. We have delay of game. Five yard penalty, third down. You cannot have delay of game. You just can't do it. 
it, it costs you your field position when you run the ball. The clock stops. That, that, that's an awful mistake by an older quarterback. It's like a timeout. It just gave Clemson a timeout and also moves you five yards back. So now you're third down and eight. Changes your play selection. 219 yards and penalties, 23 flags accepted tonight in this game combined. Clemson has to get a stop here and make them kick it a field goal. Don't forget, following our game on ESPN3 and the ESPN app, we'll have post-game coverage of this game as Dungey takes off trying to get the first down, and he stretches for the chains. It is close. And I believe we're going to get a timeout by Clemson. That's their final timeout. Great call by Dino Babers again. They call the first down. Draw, it is a first power. down. They pull the backside guard and tackle. They come through. He looks like he's in a drop back mode. He protects the ball, moves it down for the first down. What a call, what a run. Syracuse has played one heck of a game tonight. That extra turn by Dungy in the opinion of the officials, just enough for the first down. Again, following this game on the app and on ESPN3, we'll have press conferences from both coaches and, and other aspects of the post game. On ESPN, you'll have Washington State and Cal. And not surprisingly, Max, the replay booth has asked for a longer look at this spot. Yes, that, that's a game changer, so they've got to look at it. And you've got your offensive coordinator upstairs now looking at a chart saying you can take a knee with a certain amount of seconds left. They'd probably have one more run, and then they take a knee to finish the game because Clemson has no more timeouts. A minute and 37 seconds away from an upset that is a seismic one in college football. Remember it was last year Syracuse beat Virginia Tech had the big locker room celebration that everybody saw all around on their phones and on their laptops. And I can't imagine what the celebration is going to be like in a new locker room by the way that they have got a nice spiffy one. But the celebration will be if they can hang on here. And right now Dino Babers has got a fourth down call because if this review does say that they're short he's got to decide do I go field goal to make it a six point game or do I go for fourth down and one that could be stopped. So he's still, that mind is churning right now. You know what I'm going to ask you? What would you do? I would go for the first down and get the game over. But it's easy. I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not down there with a, a lead over the number two team in the country that changes your program if you win this ball game. After review, the rule Stanza's call. Clemson came in with 12 straight road wins, 11 straight wins overall. And there is that last timeout that they're going to take. They held up the enforcement of that timeout while the replay was being looked at. It'll be a 30 second timeout. And what they're telling them now is our only chance to win is a strip. Yeah. You've got to hit a ball and knock it loose. And they're also telling them to keep your composure here at the end because we don't want a, a penalty that might keep you from playing the next time we play. But you got to get a strip. You got to touch a ball. I think we'll see Syracuse run the ball one more time and then probably start taking a knee because there's no more timeouts for Clemson. But you have a first down here. Couldn't you take four knees or three knees and, and put this thing in? You can, and, and he may. It looks like now he is going to take a knee. Yeah, I think you can do this, and the math favors you. It's a little unique when you're a, a shotgun team that your quarterback is up under the center some, but you still put him up under the center, and you have to get the proper snap. But the thing is, you do this, Mac, all the stuff about stripping and all that, that is, part the expression, stripped away. Yep. You no. can't get to him. Game's over. Yep. You're watching the final seconds tick away from an undefeated season from Clemson. But they won a national championship with one loss last year. 
and for Syracuse and for Dino Babers in his second season here trying to get this city excited and his campus excited this will go a long way yeah this changes your program this is an unbelievable win and you see Dungey running over towards Sean Lewis one of the offensive coaches and he takes an extra few steps back just to make sure we're at 50 seconds. One more snap. It'll be a little crazy in that dressing room. And what Clemson's got to do is go regroup. They've got a great football team. They didn't do the things they needed to do tonight to win the game. They've got a bye week coming up. They got a chance to get their starting quarterback Kelly Bryant healthy. He was knocked out of this game with a concussion. And for Syracuse, party time. The upset pulled by the Orange. They defeat Clemson 27 to 24. Let's get down to the field. Jen Latta standing by with Dino Babers in a moment. And we're trying to find Jen and make sure she's okay as many people have just spilled out of the stands. So Jen will be with us in a moment talking to Dino Babers. I can't see either one of them in this crowd right now. Nothing feels better than a huge upset over a top ranked team at your home sharing the celebration with your fans on the field. What was your first one that you remember? You, when you were in North Carolina, you might have had an upset, right? What was the first big? Remember, we beat a really good Georgia Tech team, and the, the students tore the goalpost down. In fact, I got in trouble. I said, I enjoyed that so much. I want to see it again. Uh, I got a call from the chancellor that said, let's don't be encouraging students to tear down goalposts. And on the other end of it, of course, it'll be a long trip back to South Carolina, but a chance to rebuild physically and mentally for this team. They'll have 15 days before they take the field against Georgia Tech. Yeah, Debo Sweeney's one of the most positive guys I've ever seen. He'll pick them up in the dressing room tonight and say, we've got to get better, we've got to do things better, but let's go back to work. And they lost to Pittsburgh last year and won a national championship. So. We can't say that they're out of the race for no, sure. That's, that is absolutely the case. Dino Babers, this bunch may never make it to the dressing room. Well, I don't think the fans are going to let he or Eric Dungey make it. And they won't care. No, <laughs> I, I think they're going to be perfectly okay with whatever time they finally make it back to their lockers. And really, you know what? For Dino Babers, here's a great chance to connect with your fans literally and figuratively. And Jen is ready with Dino. Jen, go ahead. We have Dino Babers here. He is rising and all the talk of his players. Coach, he's soaking it all in. Coach, what does this mean for the coach? You know, I'm just so happy for the young men. Look at the here. They've been here so long. And to give them a win like this over the number two ranked team in the country, they believe, they have faith, and I'm just so proud of them and the football players. We don't use that word. What we say is we don't settle. So 
So we're not going to settle in our program. We're going to strive to be the best we can be. We're going to give the glory where it belongs. And aren't these fans great? Look at these fans. Jen, thank you very much. Stay safe down there. It's pretty crazy, but an incredible win for Syracuse to defeat Clemson, the number two team in the nation, 27-24. Clemson never had a lead in this game. You got a choice here. If you want to watch a little more football, we don't blame you. Washington State and Cal is going to be a great one on ESPN. If you'd like to stay and work around this reaction with us, ESPN3 and ESPN app, we will have post-game reaction Clemson and Syracuse locker rooms and coaches. The final score for the final time, Syracuse over Clemson, 27 to 24.